break on that beat going crazy Hey guys, Chris with Angler Unit. Uh, today it's give the people what they want. And what the people want is for me not to do an unboxing video and just kind of show you what's in there and move on to the next thing. Apparently, you want me to open everything and show you everything in its gory details. So um, I don't have any big unboxings today. Uh, I picked up some stuff where I was lacking a few things, just a few colors, you know, a little bit of a few things. But that's probably better because I hate unpackaging everything as I unpackage it. So with this little small order here from Tackle Warehouse, we can dig in and see what I've got here. Let me make some room on the table and we'll dig in. So this was a relatively small order kept it under a couple hundred bucks so we're doing good there all right more tackle warehouse stuff return slips that's rarely used bye all right so first up first thing on top uh this is the sixth sense uh soft plastics tackle binder and uh I had one of these before for two seasons and mutilated it. Um, so I got another one. Now, why Sixth Sense? Well, no reason. The only reason, if there is one, is it's camo. And I'm a camo fiend. Um, pretty much since I want to say the age of 10 or 11 or 12, I started getting into camouflage because I was like a big... World War II tank and, uh, you know, aircraft uh, nut as a kid in elementary school. And I just thought camo was like the coolest thing and it's carried over into my adult life. Uh, and Six Sense makes a nice pattern. It's a nice price and it holds my soft plastics. Um, I don't really like the design of it, but let's make a quick mini review. So when it's full of soft plastics, it's got a zipper and it it fits like all your soft plastics perfectly and then you know you velcro it and zip it i don't like the added touch of the velcro because it's just one more step when i'm trying to get into it um when it's in the bag i don't need the logos on it at all i would have been much happier with it just being camo and maybe having a little embroidered six cents tag on it if they have you know obviously they need to put their name on it um but yeah, so um, right now in my day bag, um, all of my soft plastics are just thrown in there loosely. They're literally just scattered throughout the bag and you guys know that doesn't work. So um, yeah, let's move on to the next thing. Next up, I got some uh, Berkeley replacement bags for a Berkeley binder. I think I got the wrong size. This looks ridiculously oversized. Yeah, I don't use ones this big. Um, will they fit in my binder? I'm gonna say it's possible, maybe Maybe they take up the, the space of, I think mine have the smaller bag. So maybe this is a double, I don't know. We'll see. I'm just gonna wipe my table down here. I have a tendency to get uh, obscene amounts of glitter all over the place in my house and wonder why. All right, what do we got in here? All right, some net bait, uh, pack of chunks, standard size, Kusa Special, I believe green pumpkin candy, 
This is just another uh, staple jig trailer, so there should be a bunch of these in here. Um, let's see. Net bait, net bait, net bait, net bait. And I think I am all, well, there's some more jig trailers in here, but let's go through them. Let's take a look. So the first one up is Tilapia Magic. So it's kind of a nice uh, bluegill imitator, green pumpkin, a dark green. You know what? No, I'm not going to call it that. There's been some confusion in the fishing industry between what watermelon and green pumpkin are. Some companies are blurring the line. To me, green pumpkin is a green, brown, and it is sort of opaque. In other words, it's not translucent. It's just like a, it's literally, you shouldn't be able to tell if it's brown or green. You shouldn't know. It should pass as both, but you shouldn't be able to label it as either. Watermelon is clearly on the green side and has more translucent to it. So I would call this a dark watermelon because it's somewhat translucent and it has a golden blue flake in it. Um, to me, that's a good bluegill. Uh, you know, I think people go overboard thinking bluegills need a lot of chartreuse and orange. A little hit of orange is great. And if you've noticed, bluegill, the only chartreuse on it is just a ghosting on the back of its tail. A little tiny bit. So I think people go overboard on the chartreuse. Next up is a color I use all the time in the pack of chunk. This is the Kusa Special. And this one's just rad. I would almost call this one uh, like a 420 color. Because it is like a uh, translucent black with red on the back and then a watermelon red on the bottom. So yeah, it's like a, a clear, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's like black and watermelon laminate with red flake, but the black isn't uh, a real opaque black and the watermelon's just kind of a soft green. So that's a pretty awesome universal color. This one's another staple. Okay, green pumpkin candy. Um, you know, not much else to say about that, but let's look at it. You have to look at every color of everything that comes out of this box today. Um, so there you go. And I would say, you know, pretty accurate green pumpkin. I like a little bit more hits of brown in it, but just another staple. You know, I would say most companies, this is their green pumpkin. And uh, purple and green flake, that simple. Uh, two of my favorite colors always have been since uh, anything with purple and green flake has been a huge staple for me for uh, decades. Next up, Bama Bug. Bama Bug is another soft plastic color that I live and die by. I don't know why. I just think it's effective and it's always awesome to me and I've always had good luck with it, whether it's stick baits or jig trailers. So you get your June bug on one side and then your green pumpkin on the other and that's really all it is. And they're two really awesome colors. And I think personally, I think they work better together than they do individually. Um, so that's that one. And then here's a color from Netbait in the pack of chunk that I have never uh, owned or used. This one is called Crawfish. I just wanted to see it. I had a feeling that it might be, you know, this might be a bait where I do one of my all the colors uh, because there's a lot of these. Uh, I don't know how many colors there are. I feel like there's like almost 40 of them, but maybe I should do a video where we look at all of them up close. So uh, what do they call it? Crawfish? Crawfish. I thought it was crawdad or crayfish. Crawfish. I don't know. I don't know if I ever used that term. So, uh, yeah, just a brown, a somewhat transparent brown with like a copper orange flake in it and black flake. So it's nice. What's nice about this in person when I'm seeing it is they didn't overdo the orange and they didn't overdo the flake. It's just enough flake. That's about 
you know, to me, that's like the right amount. Like you want it to show up, but you don't want it to, to sparkle and bling. Uh, but you want it to be evident. And uh, just a nice warm brown orange. I don't know. Yeah, so I think that's it for the pack of chunk. So it looks like I got uh, one, two, three, four, five bags of those right there. Okay, so see, I'm doing what you guys want. We're going through all of it and looking at all the colors and looking at everything up close. Next up, I've got a couple of my favorite chatterbait and spinnerbait uh, trailers. So these are the spunk shads from Hog Farmer. I got them in, all right, so this one's Tennessee. Tennessee Shad and Blizzard Gizzard. I've never had Blizzard Gizzard before. So we'll look at those up close. So Blizzard Gizzard. Tennessee Shad. Did I get any others from them? I think I did. Yeah. I got... Um, this is the Bluegill. And Albino. So there they are. Four of... Four packs of the Hog Farmer Spunk Shad. All right? One, two, three, four. So what do we have in here? Um... I know that I got some of the uh, five and a half this time around for my bigger spinner baits and my uh, chatter baits. The four and a half I use a lot of, um, especially the uh, the blue shad, because um, it just looks great on everything. Um, so the four and a half I use on the majority of my spinner baits because I typically just throw um, medium to medium finesse spinner baits. So the four and a half, I throw those like 90% of the time. So the four and a half is the one that I buy the most of. But if I am throwing a big spinner bait, which only happens a couple times a year, I throw the five and a half inch. And if I'm throwing a chatter bait, I throw the five and a half inch. So I'll break it down size specific. This is Tennessee Magic in four and a half inches. All right. Let's just take a quick look at it. I like this because this reminds me of the bait fish in the creeks where I live. Um, you know, creek chubs, shiners, and uh, even smallmouth, uh, baby smallmouth. And you can even pass it off as like little bluegill, little creek bluegill. So you've got um, basically a goby back, which is like a... I hate this debate. One day we're going to have to scientifically determine what's watermelon and what's green pumpkin. To me, this is watermelon. But I've always liked the watermelons that aren't real green, that are still a little brown and translucent. With a uh, gold flake, and I might, I see some purple in there. But anyway, it's an awesome, you know, spinnerbait trailer. It just looks like every bait fish where I live. Um, we either have shad or we have stuff that looks like this. And um, so that's why I have the four and a half inch in the spunk shad from Hog Farmer. Horrible name. Albino in the four and a half so you can just see it's just straight white um not a very sexy color but uh nonetheless muddy water then in the five and a half inch i have the uh bluegill and i love this color in a lot of different brands soft baits because it's a mixture of straight brown watermelon and blue so you know it reminds you a little bit of like a uh, a robo worm color like an aaron's magic minus the flake um in the five and a half inch so like this i like on the chatter beats just because it, you get that longer whippier tail on it and i don't know if you guys uh if i've you know you've watched any of my other videos where i've talked about this um at length but um yeah, I just use these for all the spinner baits and all the chatterbait trailers and nothing else. 
And then uh, another five and a half inch here of the Blizzard Gizzard. And the Blue Gizzard's the one I love, but I thought it'd be neat to have one that had a lot of sparkle in the back. Um, so that's all it is. It's, again, it's just white, but they have a, um, a crystal clear loaded up with silver in the back. So, you know, it's like two thirds just solid white and then just a strip down the back of the uh, clear and silver, all right? So that should do it for Spunk Shads today. And then we one got... more of the net bait pack a chunk, you know, black and blue. We're not going to discuss it. Nobody needs to discuss black and blue baits ever. Um, but here, real quick. Oh no! You know what? I didn't get black and blue. Toledo special, and I've never had this color. So maybe this was a nice mistake. Uh, so black and blue green pumpkin on the bottom. So yeah, that's rad. Um, you know, I think it's just black and blue and I, that's how I would use it for the few times that I do go to black and blue. Um, but having the green pumpkin on the bottom, the advantage to me is again, the contrast, the, the counter shading that all living organisms have, even birds are counter shaded. You know, everything's counter shaded in nature. So I like my soft plastics, um, you know, nine out of 10 of every soft plastic I buy is counter shaded. So again, with the net bait uh, pack of chunks, I just got the standard size in all of them. Not the, uh, I forget what they call the big one and not the, the little one, just the, the standard size. Uh, I use this on just pretty much, this is like a, a jig staple through the whole jig palette from finesse jigs up through um, compact pitching jigs, just standard jig size. All right, then there's a, should just be a few power bait trailers here. Um, yeah, the meaty chunk in watermelon, all right, so. This is for all of my compact, I shouldn't say compact, I should say finesse and uh, mini jigs. So it is just a tiny do nothing trailer. This just gets pulled out, uh, you know, uh, winter and lethargic times of the year. Um, I don't get, uh, I don't get, these don't get a lot of use year round, even though I'm sure you know, people would tell me I'm an idiot for not fishing uh, a chunk style trailer year round. So I thought I got the, um, this is the two and three quarter inch in the watermelon. Um, and I use it just like I said, on all my little, little baby mini jigs. And I thought that I also got the three and a half. I did. There. So the three and a half in the watermelon, you gotta look at, I promised I would take everything out today. So I'm taking everything out. So there it is. Um, do nothing jig trailer, uh, very refined action. This is just the straight up power bait one. I've been using power bait since the early nineties. Uh, and I have a lot of faith in just the, the straight up power bait. Um, and the colors are a lot better to me um, with the standard power bait. So yeah, two just standard do-nothing jig trailers. I just try to keep those on hand. They're kind of a staple and not a specialty, uh, even though they don't get used as much as the ones that have a little action in them. And then two bags of the power worms in the eight and a half inch size. One, two, okay, and again, as I promised, we will open them up and we will look at them. So the first one in the eight and a half is the, uh, which one is this? I think this is uh, like the red, not red bug. Um, it's the purple with the blue flake and I, 
it, the the name is eluding me right now, and I can't remember. Um, purple with the blue. Well, anyway, why this size and this color? Because a kid I was fishing with in the early 80s at a pond, and it must have been really early 80s. I'm going to say like I was in fourth or fifth grade, so it was probably like 82. He, that was the biggest bass I'd ever seen caught uh, in my life in person at that point. Like that bass blew my mind and he caught it on a uh, blue and purple worm like this one with a curl tail. I... If I know him, it was probably unweighted and Texas rigged on like a straight shank, like two art hook. But ever since the early 80s, like that combination of purple and blue, it's sort of in my head that that's uh, a big bass color. Uh, so I just thought it would be fun to have it in the, the power bait worm. Um, usually I just use uh, the tequila sunrise and the uh, green pumpkin and watermelon. So I grabbed that color and this is the watermelon green pumpkin. So it's, um, you know, basically, oh no, wait, is this motor oil? This is motor oil. So I've used the motor oil uh, power bait worms in a lot of the finesse stuff. And I thought I bought green pumpkin watermelon. Well, I didn't. So motor oil. And their motor oil looks rad. Um, like I said, I've used it in the smaller worms. And, you know, it's motor oil. I like motor oil because, to me, it's a very bluegill color. And it's it color shifts. And I think that's just awesome. Like, I like things that color shift. So motor oil, it depending on how you look at it, it's like watermelon or green pumpkin or just like an amber. And uh, very bluegilly, um, you know. So that's that. What else do we have in here? Um, the Geek Crack Bellows Stick. I have not, I feel like I used this years ago, unless I'm thinking of a Lake Fork product. Um, this is the 5.8 Bellows Stick. I just wanted a Senko Dinger alternative that was weird looking uh, because I've been using those so long and and that's where like my confidence is with a stick bait. I just thought it'd be fun to have something that was like a slightly different weird shape and I don't know what color this is. Um, I can't remember what color I bought but I bought it because it was green pumpkin and purple and green and purple is one of my favorite color combinations for fishing. So this one is like a green pumpkin red flake with a um, June bug uh, laminate. So it's both colors. It's June bug on one side and then green pumpkin with red flake on the other. Winning colors, both of them get the winning, get both winning colors in one. Um, these smell pretty awful. Um, this would be, I would use this honestly as a wacky rig. You know, I would throw this on a, on a wacky hook or, um, what is my dog doing? I think he's trying to open the door to my bedroom to come down here. Um, and get on camera. So, yeah, wacky rigged or Texas rigged. Um, I've thrown a similar bait to this from Lake Fork um, around spring bass that are, you know, just cruising the shallows. And they, um, I, I don't know, I think there's something to the ribbed texture. Um, but, you know, for bass that are just cruising shallow, um, I've had luck with it, you know, years ago and wanted to just go back to that, that shape, maybe try it on a shaky head. Uh, just because again, I'm a little burned out on the Senko and the Dinger. 
And, um, you know, I got away from those the last several years just because it's like a terribly boring way to fish, but it's effective. And I find that there's like, there's years where that outfishes everything else 10 to one. And then there's years where it seems like they've seen it so much that it's almost like the worst bait you can use. And I know that's weird because most people would say, you know, a stick bait always works, but I haven't found that to be the case. And they're, they're a little painful to fish because, you know, I don't know, it's like you can't, you could power fish them, but sometimes it's a little slow. So yeah, that's the, uh, the Geek Crack Bellow Stick. Um, this color is fucking awesome looking in person, by the way. Like it's the most delicious colors put together. And uh, I'll just make a point of fishing this just because I know I'll catch a fish on it and I can be like, yeah, that color works. But um, yeah, so that's just like a, I wanted to get something off the wall, fun and new that I haven't ever used, you know, for uh, throwing a wacky rigged soft plastic. And this is bringing up the tail end here. Just a few other little things in here. We have uh, the Picasso tungsten drop shot weights, which um, I don't go through them terribly quickly. Uh, somehow I manage to get drop shot weights back a lot. I don't know how. 3 16th ounce. I've settled on that. Um, to me, quarter ounce, it's too heavy. And anything less than 3 16th, I feel like I can't maintain bottom contact. Um, I don't do a lot of vertical uh, presentation of a drop shot. I tend to fish a seven foot four medium um, spinning rod with braid with maybe like a, a pretty long leader, like 16 feet of eight pound uh, Tatsu for fluorocarbon. And so what I'll do is I'll drag like a, um, a bait through and over a lot of weeds. So it's a lot of vegetation, a lot of long casts, and a lot of uh, pulling it horizontal. So I feel like the 3 16th is kind of like the happy medium. It's like, it's just enough bottom contact, but it's not too heavy where I don't feel like I can kind of swim that bait. I don't know. And I try to just use as much stuff, especially tungsten, as much from Picasso as I can possibly use because I'm trying to support a uh, company that's in my home state. And, uh, you know, not a big swim jig guy. Um, and over the last few years, I've gone through my supply of the uh, Dirty Jigs Finesse Swim Jig. Never replenished it. I was just like, you know, spinner baits are enough for me. I don't really need to throw a swim jig, but I thought, you know what? I should have a couple in the bag. So I got the Beast Coast Working Man's Swim Jig in just a few weird colors just to throw them in the jig box. And um, yeah, so these are, I would say these are a little on the, the standard to maybe just slightly finesse side. So, um, of the uh, swim jig arena. So let's take a look at them, okay? So the first one up here is some kind of bluegill. I can't remember what they call this color. Doesn't matter because this isn't a all the colors video. This is an unboxing video. And this is just their, sort of their bluegill swim jig. So yeah, with the Beast Coast, um, this is this about the scale of spinnerbait and um, swim jig that I use here in Pennsylvania. So it's, you know, orange, like a pumpkin orange uh, gator color with the, um, the awesome tinsel that Beast Coast is known for. Um, the flashaboo, I believe it is. And then the back is like a green and black uh, color shifting silicone. So, you know, nice narrow head shape, uh, somewhat soft weed guard, which is what you want on a swim jig. You know, this is just gonna be nice with a small 
uh, three and a half inch trailer. Um, you know, finesse works here and I don't need like big, heavy swim jigs. So uh, the other color I got here is the, I don't know what, I don't know what the colors are. I just wanted three sort of lightweight swim jigs and I believe I got them all in the quarter ounce. This one is like a blue and black, but it has a little bit of like a purpley pink in it at the bottom there. And it has the, the clear and blue flashaboo with the darker black back. Maybe I'll do a um, all the colors video of this one as well with that interesting blue head. And then just a shad one here. So I got a bluegill, a shad, and then the black and blue, you know, just a muddy water option. Let's see here. Come on out. So this is kind of like a lavender shad. Um, again, I'd fish this with like a, a ghost or a clear body on it. White, lavender with uh, green flashaboo and just a few strands of chartreuse in the back. It's a good looking color. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's the unboxing. I did what I said I would do. I went through uh, all these packages and made sure that I showed you everything that I got up close. So I'll be uh, organizing the bag getting out a lot in the coming weeks. I've got like four or five awesome fishing days lined up. I'll get the uh, GoPro fired up. I'm going to take you guys some cool places and I've got some other awesome videos lined up. So I'm getting back in the swing of things here. I'm still here in the uh, dining room. That's a makeshift uh, studio for right now next to the kitchen. Um, the basement has some leak issues, so the renovation of the basement and the studio are going to be on hiatus for at least six months. So I'll probably be filming from here for the foreseeable future. Well, at least, you know, hopefully by next year, I won't be sitting on a couch in the living room. And uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, I hope this satiated your unboxing i need to see everything up close uh needs and i'll see you guys in the next video have an awesome day and stay safe out there take care